Hi, I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot for Precision Aerobatics, and today we're going to talk about CG. I'm going to give you a, a, a bunch of different reasons why you need to understand uh, CG and how it affects the flight, of, uh, the flight characteristics of your plane. Uh, I'm going to fly my addiction a little bit this morning. I've adjusted the CG a little forward. Um, and when I say a little forward, I mean a little forward. Uh, far forward is definitely never uh, much of a good idea. But when I adjust the CG forward, this plane will do a few things a little different. Um, it will tumble a little better. You know, knife edge spins and any other types of tumbling like that. It desensitizes the, uh, the elevator and rudder a bit as well. And um, you'll see some of the straight line flying is, is, is just a little bit better. It's always very good. I never fly very far off the CG because I think there's a lot of disadvantages we'll talk about later. But anyway, I'm going to take it up and we'll see this flying with a little bit uh, for CG. It's just a pop top, something that it, the addiction never likes because it's not that heavy a plane. Hold on. Uh, anyway, well, first thing, obviously, I have to trim it a little bit for the bit more for uh, CG. But this is definitely what I like the most about it. I'm on high rates. Watch how pretty the straight lines get. Just straight as an arrow. Flight mode uh, four. Change the rate a little bit. This little outside knife edge flip thing uh, is a little better with the Speed nose well. heavy. And it really tracks nice and straight uh, on knife edge. The effect here is really interesting. It keeps the rolling harriers kind of uh, a little more level without the nose so high. But coming in for this landing, instead of the plane ballooning, the airframe stayed fairly level. And of course, on all the straight line stuff, it really benefits. Wow. So a few things it'll do a little better, and this is a little, that snap flip. You see how nice and tight it was, and also how quickly it, it stopped. If it's a little tail heavy, it, it, it does that a little bit differently. Uh, if you'll notice, it really does the, the, the flippy part of it really fast, and it'll stop pretty quick. I think everything relating to a straight line is much better with the CG just a little forward. Time remaining four minutes. When we're doing things like a rolling Harrier and so on, you know, this really kind of... Uh, helps its stability a little bit. I don't want to say they're easier to do, but I think uh, it kind of slows the ailerons down a little bit. And instead of changing your rate, sometimes just adjusting the CG a little forward helps. On knife edge, of course, this is the Addiction X, but you know, if you're flying a little faster, it really helps the knife edge track well. Uh, again, it desensitizes the rudder just a little bit. And it tends to want to hold the lines a little bit nicer. I'm going to show you a tumble with the CG a bit more forward. A little knife edge spin. See how much nicer and faster it is? You know, a lot of people consider hovering, you know, uh, the, the place where you definitely need to... Uh, uh, have an aft CG and it is just not true. Harriers tend to look a little better with a slightly aft CG. Uh, you can get rid of wing rock with an aft CG. But as you'll be able to see right now, hovering is just fine. This is with a, you know, with a nose heavy aircraft. Everything wants to stay just fine. Again, with tumbling a little bit nose heavy makes it just come over a little quicker, a little nicer. One minute. 
The reason a lot of people want that FCG is because they feel that the uh, makes the tail hang a little bit. And although there's a little bit of truth in that, it really only benefits when it's dead hanging like this. Other than that, it just doesn't really help that much. Okay, this is another little experiment on CG. I'm gonna fly this electric shock V2 and I'm gonna fly it with a very aft CG. This is about as far aft as I would ever try to fly it. And uh, we're just gonna see how it performs. Uh, as a coincidence, uh, Sean wanted me to do some experimenting with uh, aft CG just to see what its performance differences are. So uh, we're gonna take it up and I'll show you what a really aft CG does and I'll try and describe what I'm feeling as it's happening. Okay. We're gonna see how this CG does with uh, hair earring. With this very aft CG, what's going to happen is things are going to be a lot more sensitive. It will be a little less likely to have wing rock. Um, I have a wind that's throwing it over a little bit, so it's a little windier than I would like it to be for this experiment. But now watch when I go up into a hover. You just can watch the behavior of the aircraft. It's definitely wanting to hang a little better like that but it definitely feels a lot more sensitive and I know that I probably wouldn't want to fly it this way but it's really this particular plane isn't doing too badly I think it's hovering actually pretty well now we're going to try a little bit of knife edge and see how it does it's kind of making the rolling harriers a little weird but I think I can probably dial it in so it, it does a little better. I'm using a really light battery and I added uh, some weight to the tail to, to get this really aft CG. But as I suspected, it's, the tail is hypersensitive. Okay, if I fly this aircraft uh, straight and level, just like this, it's gonna tend to want to balloon a little bit. So I'm obviously, I, I have to, uh, when I add power, I've got to, um, uh, I'm going to have to give some down elevator for sure. But the things that's going to hurt the most is going to be the straight line flying. Um, it's just going to be uh, a little extra sensitive, pitch sensitive. It's going to be much harder to fly smooth and straight. Okay, another uh, big thing about uh, uh, CG. Uh, my friend David here is going to let me fly his jet today. Um, and a lot of people are really, especially with even turbines and things like that, they're always trying to make sure that that jet is nose heavy because for some reason they're very afraid of tail heavy. Um, of course, we don't ever want something really tail heavy, but if I had a dollar for every time somebody gave me a plane to test fly and it was nose heavy, I would be a very rich man. Um, the fact is the plane needs to be balanced well. Now, one of the big reasons that you want it to be balanced, and sometimes, depending on the jet, um, I've had jets that people, that I've actually purchased, that people said, you know, you gotta be careful, it lands super, super fast. Well, one of the reasons it landed super fast is these airframes are very slippery, very sleek. If it's nose heavy and it doesn't wanna settle in at all this way, it will just keep flying and it'll keep flying fast. I, I mean, it just won't lose speed. Uh, the, the flaps help, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't terminate the speed like it should. Um, have you ever watched an F-16 come in where it settles in, it's such a high alpha and so on and so forth? If your plane is coming in too straight and too level and, and, and it's hard to slow down, moving back to CG will do a, a lot for your model because as the plane gets slower, um, and your, your surfaces get a little less effective, um, the plane will start to, to get that nose high attitude by itself a little bit if it's just a little aft. So if you just bring it back a little bit, you can really make a, a plane that doesn't like to land well, you'll make it land pretty well. Um, I was assured by David that this thing is very well balanced and so on and so forth. And if it's balanced really well, 
I should be able to, uh, again, get that nose up a little bit on landing and land it on the back wheels. I mean, that's kind of the plan. I've never flown it, so we'll see what happens. Timer start. All right, we're going to drop the gear. Gear down. Now give me full flaps. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can. Landing flaps. Now you see how low I am? Yeah. Now seconds. watch this plane as it kind of settles in. Dude. Beautiful. I'm going to put this flat spin and you'll see a nice balanced CG should keep this uh, should keep this model pretty you know pretty flat through the flat spin beautiful look at that and as you'll notice with this, uh, you know, with the with the flip turn like this. Minus two minutes. You know, a nice balanced CG keeps the plane balanced throughout. Uh, we're flying it now without a gyro. So um, all of the, you know, how it came out so nice and flat, wings level and everything like that is, is I think, in a big part uh, due to a nice balanced aircraft. The nice height. I'll bring it in. Nose up. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Minus three minutes. Um, I want to tell everybody that this aircraft, I fly this a little bit tail heavy, and I'll tell you why. Um, I like to do low knife edge passes. Okay. I like to fly this thing in a configuration where I'm flying a lot slower. And when I'm flying a jet slow, there's very small surfaces. If you look at the uh, elevator back here, there's not a ton of it. And same thing with the rudder. If I am flying knife edge, that rudder has pretty fair authority. But if I was nose heavy at all, um, it just wouldn't stay as high alpha as I need. So I'm flying this aircraft a bit uh, more tail heavy. I believe it makes it a bit easier to land as well. Um, most people, like I said before, just want to get their jets. They say nose heavy, nose heavy, nose heavy. And um, besides that nice high alpha that you get with it uh, on landing, it's also a lot easier for the aircraft to rotate and take off. If you're nose heavy, between the uh, uh, degradation in the effectiveness of the elevator and the flaps, um, all that weight on the nose makes it a lot harder for the aircraft to rotate. And on grass, and if this jet was smaller, sometimes you'll end up running right off the runway, which I've seen a hundred times. Anyway. Right here, you're going to see a, a bit of a benefit to a bit aft CG because I'm going to roll it inverted on takeoff. Now here is that knife edge pass I talked about, and you see how nice and high the nose is and how pretty it stays straight. That was all because of the bit more aft CG giving me more control. Here's the same with the inverted pass, just a bit more control and it sets in a really nice position for that pass. And this nose high landing is the same thing, it's partially due to the good CG. 
these are all pretty self-explanatory. It just kind of explains a bit about CG. <clears throat> this one is kind of important though because it suggests that if you're flying with a forward CG, it requires a bit higher angle of attack, meaning that your plane needs to fly at a different angle of attack to get the same lift. These diagrams are for full-scale aircraft, but the plane will fly faster with an aft CG, which is a bit counterintuitive, I would think, for most of us flying RC. You really need to take a look at this. It's very interesting saying that the plane actually requires more lift, which means it will stall a little bit easier if it is no he nose heavy. Again, this uh, applies to full-scale aircraft, but you should definitely stop the film and read this. <laughs>